We make high performance, high quality, plenty of equipment. We make the best. And um, it's not the cheapest, it's never going to be the cheapest, but it is the best. The year is 1987. In a dense forest outside of Birmingham, England, a small paintball field is formed by a group of brothers, Matt, John, and Jed Green, bringing the excitement of the recently invented game to the countryside of England. It was only six years prior that Bob Guernsey and 11 other men walked into the forest near Henniker, New Hampshire, playing what many consider to be the first game of paintball. The field started small, but as interest grew in the area, the Green Brothers formed a company under the name Who Dares Play Limited to open a small shop at the field and start to run local tournaments to help push the growth of paintball in the area. Who Dares Plays was shortened to WDP with the release of their first product in 1991. The Mamba Coil Remote, an upgrade to the steel braided hose that was common at the time. Jed Green had been quoted saying, It always holds a special place with me, as through that first product I met my lady. She was the Mamba girl. I still love tying her up with those hoses to this day. This quote should start to paint a picture about how WDP chose to market itself moving forward. John Rice joined WDP in 1994, and the idea of the Angel was started. John had already been toying around with the idea of adding electronic components to existing markers of the day, and started to work on this idea more formally for WDP. While progress on the marker was being made in the background, WDP pushed forward with hosting events and growing their storefront and field. Jed wanted something more to show off the new marker that they were working on. The whole woodland thing wasn't working for us, so we sat down and thought up of an arena-based game that would blow the tournament scene wide open. That became Hyperball, and we never ran another woodland event. Hi, my name's Tom Clark Hill, and this is the world's first Hyperball Arena, smack dab in the middle of jolly old England. In this spectacular arena, we're going to see a whole new form of paintball. See, the players are coming out of the woods. They're coming out of all that camouflage gear and into uniforms to give the sport a new visuality. Out of convention and into the future. We invented the Hyperball concept in 1996, which was what brought tournament paintball out of the woods and into an arena. In the same year, we gave people markers that would fire insanely fast. The rate of fire achievable from the Angel set a new standard. Teams were literally getting blown away. During this event, the company showed off the Angel V6, a pre-production prototype made in very low quantities showing attendees at the event for the first time how fast a paintball marker could be with the addition of an electronic board and solenoid. A year later, with the help of a sister company, Pure Promotions, WDP went even bigger with the 97 World Hyperball Championships, bringing in numerous outside industry sponsors as well as releasing the first production model marker from WDP, the Angel, known as the Angel LED today. While public perception of the event and marker were great, and even with the additional backing of outside industry sponsors, the Hyperball Championships were still a financial loss, prompting WDP to sell off the concept of Hyperball to Brass Eagle, and focusing on the marketing and promotion of their new marker. But this wouldn't be WDP and Pure Promotion's last attempt at promoting paintball tournaments. The release of the Angel in 97 marked a new chapter in the paintball arms race, with many aftermarket modification factories getting their hands on the Angel LED. A common modification was to remove the single trigger frame and add a double trigger to the Angel, with one of the most iconic from this era being Rocky Cagnoni's Warp Sports Dark Angel LED, lovingly named Doo -doo Brown. The Doo -doo Bro. Doo -doo Brown, dude. She's all about consistency and pleasing her master. With the new millennia coming quickly, WDP released the Angel LCD, a refinement to the LED that added in an LCD screen to show current settings and to help with programming, a feature that is universal in all high-end markers today. Throughout the 1990s, WDP went from being an unknown small English paintball field to releasing one of the first electronic markers to hit the market, positioning itself as a favorite going into the new century.
After making it through Y2K safely, WDP got to work, with 2001 seeing the release of one of their strangest products to date, the Angel Air. They added electronic sensors and an LCD screen to a rig. An undoubtedly cool product, but one that screams early 2000s technology when looked at today. 2001 also saw WDP getting involved with team sponsorships, sponsoring a group of kids from California. You know who I'm talking about. Dynasty used WDP markers for the first few years of their pro career, helping them storm onto the pro scene and increasing WDP's image as the high-end marker used by the best teams. The early 2000s also brought with it Angel Heaven, one of WDP's ways to grow their presence at events. Heaven was a private player hangout area, and if the rumors from Warpig slash PB Nation forums were true, then that's about all I can talk about on YouTube. Moving forward. The IR3 was released from WDP in 2002, adding on a connection port to upload settings quickly, easing the process of getting settings dialed in correctly on the marker. The other big feature of the IR3 was the COP system, a crystal-operated paint sensor, a version of eyes that used oscillation of crystals to detect if a ball was settled in the breach before firing. The system was over-engineered, and some players chose to modify their marker with aftermarket eyes and forego the system altogether. The end of 2002 also saw the end of the MPPL 10-man format, the league being splintered into two rival tournament series. WDP and Pure Promotions chose to back the MPPL Super 7s, a modified 10-man format, hosting the first event in an iconic location. Playing on the sand with no turf caused a lot of problems, both for players and their equipment as well as the site cleanup. But the event did show the players of the game that Pure Promotions was willing to put paintball in places it's never been before. Dynasty won this event with WDP Angels in hand. Dynasty, let's get it! Hometown boys, let's hear it! Dynasty! $20,000 in cash! Is this being WDP's main bet with backing the MPPL. If they could host the best tournaments with the best teams shooting their markers, they could take over more market share, increasing WDP's revenue, just as they did with their small operation in Birmingham, which in 2003 was also placed into the ownership of a new LLC. WDP Paintball Limited was formed to retain the field as a separate business entity, and it is still in operation to this day. 2003 was rounded out with the release of two new markers, the A4 and the Speed. The Speed was released earlier in the year, coming in at a cheaper price point than previous markers, and a new low-pressure engine, the first from WDP. The Speed also updated COPS to the Sensi system. It was better, still over-engineered, but it was a refinement in this iteration. The biggest downgrade in the Speed was a return to LEDs and a lack of an LCD readout which returned for the A4. Released in July, they took the low-pressure engine from the Speed and put it in a smaller and lighter body. It did add back in some quality of life features like an LCD readout and a new soft touch bolt to help you better with brittle paint. Taking this momentum with them, Pure Promotions and WDP went bigger in 2004. And I think a lot of it has to do with the amazing venues and everybody, Pure Promotions have really stepped up with their attention to detail. The vendors and sponsors really appreciate that. They brought a production company out to events to put together hour-long post-produced shows about each NPPL tournament, with the hopes of selling these rights off to sports broadcasting networks. They returned to the sands of Huntington Beach, added some turf this time, and held events in other public-facing venues. Now, Rocky, this is an incredible venue for paintball, isn't it? Absolutely. MPPL knows how to put on an event. They have great refing. They take care of the players. The venues that they pick are unbelievable. I mean, that's the main reason why the event sells out every time. WDP also released the A4 Fly this year, an update to the A4, which also brought breakbeam eyes to an angel from the factory for the first time. Called IQ, it was a major upgrade over the COPS and Sensi system, helping to allow the fly to shoot a claimed 31 BPS. 31 bolts a second, and it will actually do that, it will actually deliver that. We put a lot of engineering into it, it's, it's a British made gun, everyone's handmade. Today's markers are capped at 10.5 BPS during an NXL tournament. This marker could shoot almost three times faster. The Speed also saw a revamp in late 2004. The Speed 05 was more of the same, but notably this was WDP's first marker to be powered by a 9-volt battery. The new Speed this event, we had a big unveiling party uh, Thursday for it. It has the same engine, uh, which is capable of 31 balls a second. It's good, it's a reliable gun for a decent price, fast, and it's going to rip right out of the box. 
Uh, it has a proven angel eye system. Turn it on, let it rip. It's just rolling. I didn't break a ball all weekend. Pure Promotions broke through in the 2005 season, securing a broadcasting deal with ESPN2. I'm Trace Worthington, joined by paintball superhero Matty Marshall. That's right, man. We got $50,000 at stake and all the bragging rights in the world here. It's going to be awesome. This was one of Matty Marshall's first appearances as the voice of paintball, helping add color commentary to the game shown on ESPN. Excessive and dynasty. Both teams prime for combat. They're off. Oh, it looks like Thomas Taylor took a shot on the feed neck of his gun. But he kept shooting. The referee calls a one point penalty on that pulse. Cuba out. The year over year growth at events was up. And with this new form of marketing showcasing the MPPL's events and top matches, Pure Promotions was expanding and thriving giving WDP prime exposure to show off their new marker for 05, the Angel G7. Well, the Angel G7 did sell well and was an incredibly fast marker. Planet Eclipse released the first Ego shortly before this marker, and players started to notice the weight and reliability differences between the two manufacturers, putting Angel and WDP's market share in jeopardy in a way that wasn't seen before. Following up on the G7 in 2006, the A1 was released, a beautiful marker that had some great design thought put into it, but WDP stepped back from Angel's hand-built manufacturing process and elected to have the marker made in China. Was that Beijing? Because of this, manufacturing tolerances on the markers were all over the place, with many A1s needing serious tech work within only a few months of owning the marker. WDP also released another update to the speed, the Speed 06, but this did little to quell the writing that was growing even bigger on the wall. WDP's markers were losing their image as being the high-end marker used by the best teams. And as much as 2006 signaled an end for one of WDP's biggest teams, 06 was also a turning point for the company. Something wasn't working as it did four years ago, and changes needed to be made. These changes came in the following year. Pure Promotions sold the promotion rights for the MPPL to Pacific Paintball LLC, followed shortly by the face of the company, Owen Rowan, deciding to walk away from WDP after almost 20 years of working with the Green family. Even the name WDP had to go. Rebranding themselves as Angel Paintball Sports, the Green family was doing everything it could to stop the bleeding of cash and recover the brand to its former heights. And then 2008 happened. Any story in paintball that takes place in the 2000s requires a mention of how the 08 crash of the US international economies affected the sport. The money dried up, and even the most cash flow positive businesses had problems servicing their debt. Doing what they could, they released an update of the A1, the A1 Fly, which helped to resolve some of the A1's problems and included the Magno valve, an updated valve that used magnets to help with low pressure operation, and they were able to weather the storm. But for how much longer? Dai, Planet Eclipse, Bob Long were all taking over as top marker manufacturers, and Angel's bulky three-tube design was no longer necessary to efficiently put down vast amounts of paint. APS either refused or did not have the resources to update the design of their marker, and instead, they chose to spend their time in 2009 researching and developing their wildest product yet. The, um, the Angel Eyes, um, it's going to retail for about 120. Been working on it a long time. Pretty pleased with it. We've had a really good reception here with the goggle. Angel Eyes were announced in 2010 at the Huntington Beach event. APS was taking a major gamble and stepping into a product type that they never have before. And the results got everyone talking. Eyes hype grew quickly. And with no set release date announced, people couldn't wait to get their hands on the new and exciting mask. The problem being, Angel Eyes would never be released to the public. With only a few pre-production models ever seeing the light of day, Angel Eyes failed to pass ASTM standards testing, a testing standard that all paintball products go through before being released into the market. JTs, grills, SLRs, KLRs, etc. all had to pass this testing process before being able to be sold to the public. The Angel Eye design was unsafe to the standard bankers, and unless a serious redesign of the mask was complete, it was a flawed product, hyping up Angel one last time as it was going into its sunset years. The final marker to be released from Angel was in 2011. 
The Fly SB was another evolution of the same three-tube design that had been first introduced in 1997. And while the internals were vastly improved, you can't teach an old dog new tricks. European leagues started to cap rate of fire in tournaments, prompting paintball players to refocus on what they looked for in a marker. This shiny little marker could spit out paintballs at an unbelievable rate, but that didn't matter anymore. The Fly SB did have a small audience that appreciated it, but a majority of players chose other companies. This would be the last marker ever released from APS, and instead of another restructuring period, the company formally dissolved in February of 2013. With the Green family retaining the rights to the Angel name, quietly bringing the end to one of Paintball's most interesting and influential companies. WDP and Angel's legacy in the game is something that can't be understated. From hosting the first Hyperball event to bringing a party-like atmosphere and promotion to the MPPL events, they made the Aston Martin of paintball markers. They were fast, gorgeous, hand-built, British. But they could be found in a shop more often than their owners would like. The Green family, Matthew, John, Jed, as well as Owen Ronan, John Rice, and many other nameless faces that worked for WDP during the company's tenure, were on the leading edge of the sport trying to find its footing during a massive boom in excitement and popularity. Paintball has yet to return to the heights that it found itself in during the 2000s, and it can be said without a doubt that WDP's influence played a part, bringing culture and style to a sport that was stuck in the woods in drab camo uniforms. Alright guys, well, that's the story. Thank you so much for watching. I'm glad that you stayed around. This information was scrubbed from different parts of the internet and I was able to gather it from archives, interviews, um, old stories, uh, videos that were out there. There is a ton of other rumors about WDP that I just, I simply couldn't confirm or find the evidence to support. So I did not include those for this purpose. Um, this video took weeks to research, write, film, edit, and get out. Um, any support on it helps, liking the video, dropping a subscription, I definitely appreciate that. I was sadly too young to witness any of this era of paintball. Um, researching and creating these video essays is a way for me to get kind of immersed in the past, a time when the game we all love was new and exciting. I want to give a quick shout out to our Patreon producers. Um, head down to the link in the description, you get over to Patreon, get access to bonus content and ad free content. Um, thank you to Ryan Doss, Michael Bear, Dave Morgan, Junior Brown from BFPgear.com. All four of you guys, I appreciate your extra support. Everyone else who's on there as well, I also appreciate your guys' support. More content will be on the way soon, and I appreciate you guys for checking this one out. Have a good one. Thank you.